evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Homie Picks. I'm always joined by my co-hosts, Lou and Ben. Fellas, I hope y'all had a good week. Um, it was not such a good week no. for me. I hit the <laughs> golden sombrero for the first time. I was 0-5 on all of my picks. And I would have been 1-4 if I stuck. If you, if you watched the replay last week, I said, up until Lou spoke, I was going for the Chargers. And then I said, but then I said, no, nah, I'm going for the KC. <laughs> I would have been one and fucking four, but it is what it is. We move on to the next week. This is week four. Um, tonight's game is the lowly um, Jacksonville Jaguars and the Bengals. We don't care about that game. We're not even going to bother with that game. However, what we are going to bother with are the surprisingly decent, well, maybe because they're scheduled, but the surprisingly decent Carolina Panthers and the surprisingly <laughs> decent Dak Prescott-led Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we are going to start with that game. That is a one o'clock game. Currently, Dallas, the home team, is the four and a half point favorite, minus 200, um, plus, six, plus 168 for the, for the Carolina Panthers. Um, Lou, how do you see this, man? Man, uh, you know, shout out to Carolina. I mean, you you play the schedule you dealt, right? You got to win the games in front of you, and they've done that. Um, I, I think that uh, Adam Gase curse or good luck charm, if you want to call it, after you leave them, is, is continuing <laughs> to rock. Um, but Dallas has been surprisingly good. I mean, that offense is, is stacked. Um, you know, we didn't get a lot of CD Lamb that last game. But um, that found a way. Uh, we got a heavy dose of Zeke. Zeke finally just found the end zone, scored two touchdowns. Um, I'm liking this matchup, uh, but I, I I think this is where Carolina's you know streak stops. Um, I think Dallas has put a, a strong hold on the on the NFC East. You know they already beat the Eagles, Giants, or who they say they were. Um, nobody. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm taking Dallas in this one. I, I think a one o'clock start for them it does good for them. And um, Carolina finally comes down to earth a little bit. Yeah, Ben? Yeah, uh, yeah, Dallas is playing great right now. I'm, gonna, I'm a little surprised by their defense. Their defense is playing much better than, than I expected. Uh, Michael Parsons really stepping up, um, making, their, their, making them look really fast right now on defense. But, I mean, they beat the Giants and they beat Philly. I mean, I, I'm not 100% sold on them. I do feel Carolina has a better defense than Dallas right now. Um, I don't think it, it, Dallas can score. So, and I think Carolina can keep up. But I, I think the slight edge might go to the defense on Carolina. So I like Carolina with this one. Interesting pick. I like that. Um, I, being that they still are without um, Christian McCaffrey, and I remember ragging on him before saying it don't matter if they have CMC, CNC, CDC all that, it don't matter, Panthers ain't doing nothing. And apparently it didn't matter because they actually could run the ball better. Um, I noticed as soon as they lost, um, as soon as they lost um, McCaffrey, um, that's when the run game started to slow down and they didn't really move as fluent as they did before. Um, Sam Darnold surprisingly is playing really good football. Um, so that must have been, I mean, at three games, you can definitely say it was the Jets and not Darnold. Um, but I think, I, while I do agree, I think the Panthers have the better defense of the two. I think the Panthers may have the better defense of the three teams they've played so far. Um, but just how efficient Dak has been playing recently, um, I just had to give the edge to the Cowboys in this one. Uh, they're just moving, they're moving that ball. Um, you got to take into consideration Philadelphia. Granted, it was the Falcons that Philadelphia shut down for the most part. That's that same, I mean, the, yeah, it's the same Falcons team that scored 28 on the Buccaneers. And I'm not saying they're world beaters, but the fact that they returned almost all of their starters, that's saying something. Um, it's also the same team that limited, um, it's the same team, you know, that limited the Niners to 17 points from 40 the week before. And they couldn't do jack shit against the Cowboys um, last week. Um, so I, I think Dallas's offense is showing that they are clicking on all, on all cylinders. 
um, and that they are trying to be the runaway favorite in that division. Um, I think this is, an, this is a game that they have to win to keep on top of that because we know how quick things can turn around. Washington can, you know, be top of them before you realize it. So I think Dallas wins this game, um, which then leads us to the NFC, the, well, the, the first of two NFC West uh, showdowns. Uh, the first one we're going to go for is the Cardinals against the Rams. Rams, of course, are the favorites after holding down Tom Brady. <laughs> I mean, they held called the man it, down. I called it. You did call that one. Uh, the Rams, you know, are the favorite. Uh, they beat the Super Bowl champions, looking like Super Bowl contenders. Um, they are the four and a half point favorite, negative 240. Cardinals are plus 198. Ben, do you like Cardinals? Do you like Rams? <laughs> this one it, it's it's tough uh because really arizona has a really good offense right now they can score and kyler kyler murray is just like you, you can't tackle the man however i it, they still do make their mistakes i feel that the rams can keep up with them yeah, offensive wise and they have definitely have the edge on the, on the defense i'm gonna go with the rams on this one i just i don't see them overcoming it it's, it's probably going to be a high scoring game but I, I see the Rams being winning this one. Nope. Yeah. Uh, man, Stafford, like, Stafford's the epitome of, you know, when you leave a relationship and you say it was you, not me, and you go and prove it, I think he's doing that <laughs> right now. Like, he's literally telling the rest of the league, it wasn't me in Detroit. It was them. Because, um, man, that dude's balling out. Um, I, he, he hasn't looked bad. He, yeah. he hasn't looked bad at all. You know, people wait for him to have that game. They thought Tampa Bay will be that game where, you know, the real Matt Stafford stands up. But, you know, he's, he's, he's firing all cylinders. Um, I think this is a huge game, especially within that division um, where you got Seattle taking a loss. You know, you, you got to start to have that separation. The Raiders are, my God, you know, uh, another reason in the division. But, um, you know, the Niners are there still. So it, it's – this is going to be a separation game. Um, the big boys from the, the pretenders. Uh, I, I'm, I'm rolling with Stafford again to, to he proves me otherwise. And he has a phenomenal defense to system, you know, so it can be a shootout, which they can do, or it can be, you know, they blow somebody out and the defense holds them down. Um, so uh, I'm going with the Rams. Yeah. This one's a tough one for me as well. Um, here, here's, here's the reason why I'm going to lean towards the Rams on this one though. Because when it was Cardinals in Minnesota, and Minnesota has a mediocre defense, they were kind of catching, you know, keeping up with Kyler for the most part. And Kyler's, Kyler's greatest strength is his elusiveness and way to extend the play. His downfall, which, you know, is just his height. He can't really see over his he, line. Yep. Um, he has to make a lot of moves to try to see over things to try to get you know and he has some of the best wide receiver play you'll ever see um and and, and aj and, and d hop um so even even if he has to throw a bad pass he has two really good wide outs to catch that um and they can extend plays for him um but i think the rams defense is just a little bit more sound and they are going to be the best defense that the Cardinals may face outside of san fran's defense um it's I think I do think the Cardinals may split a game. I just don't see the split coming in, in LA. They may have they may have better hope in Arizona. Um but yeah, I, I'm just gonna lean toward the Rams on this one. Um Aaron Donald is just a freaking monster, man. What is yeah. this third time the third time in a row defensive player of the year? Yeah. About to be number four, about to be the fourth time. So yeah, it's, I mean, well, then again, I don't know because the the Bears did make Miles Garrett look like he was going to be defensive player of the year. <laughs> uh, the way he got yeah. four and a half sacks on on Justin by himself. But anyway, uh, by the way, shout out to the president. I do think your Bears do win this weekend. We're not talking about that one though. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Now, which goes to our second 
um, NFC West uh, game, we have the Seahawks at the Niners. Niners are the favorite, um, even coming off that loss against the, the Packers. Um, great game, great finish. Um, heartbreaking finish for Niners fans especially, but um, the Niners are the three and a half, I'm sorry, are a three-point favorite, negative 148. Seahawks are a plus 126. So even even Vegas or the size makers see this one as a tight contention um, game. Um, but I still see the Niners coming out on top on this one. Um, the Niners fell flat, or they fell 37 seconds short of beating Aaron Rodgers again, um, especially at Santa Clara of San Fran, however you want to call it. Um, Aaron Rodgers has had no success against Jimmy Garoppolo, funny enough, until last until last week. Um, and that was their home opener. And I think the Niners are going to come out for a little bit more intensity um, against the Seahawks. Um, granted, the Seahawks have a better defense than the Packers. And Russell Wilson to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett is a sound combination. The Niners, bane of their existence, is their cornerback play. Um, but if that front four can slow pressure Wilson enough, I think they can make havoc for him. Um, and I just think the Niners going to win this one. It may be a three-point win at, at that as well. So even in terms of like the, the, the spread, it could be a push on that one. Um, but yeah, I like the Niners on this one in a, in a tight uh, in a, in a tight uh, matchup. Lou, what about you? Yeah, I'm leaning the other way in this one. I think Pete Carroll and you know, Russell Wilson know this is a must win for them. Um, you can't fall behind in, the, in this division. Uh, even though you can probably lock up a, a wild card spot or a second wild card spot. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I have a feeling three of the teams in this division are going to the playoffs. Um, now in what order? I don't know that's going to be. So you, you got to start again having that separation. Um, I think Seattle has to bounce back from that loss to Minnesota. Like, I, I don't know what happened um, in that game with them. They have to establish the run and against San Fran's front four may be difficult. Uh, but again, with DJ Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, it should be a good attack for them. Um, I'm going to go with Seattle. It's going to be—I think this is going to be a nail biter. Uh, hopefully, somebody doesn't leave enough time on the clock. <laughs> good one, Ben. Yeah, I'm with Lou on this one. I, I like Seattle as well. I'm just going to give the edge right now just to Seahawks, just for Russell Wilson. I mean, he, he can make more plays than Garoppolo can. Um, but, they, yeah, they're pretty close. I think it's going to be a tight game. It's, it, I don't think it's going to be that high scoring. It's going to be a defensive battle. Um, but I, it's just that dynamic play with Metcalf and Lockett. You know, they can, you know, score quickly. And, and I think that's really what, what it's going to be. It's going to be like a last possession score kind of deal. When I see Seattle coming on top, I mean, it's a division game. They're pretty good on, within division games. Um, so they have a good record there. So and and like you mentioned, they, they took that loss with Minnesota. So I I don't think they want to fall behind anymore. So I I think they'll come out with some urgency. I think they'll get that win. Um, speaking of urgency, it took Justin Tucker a 66-yard field goal to break the record to beat <laughs> to beat the Detroit Lions. Um, yeah, of urgency, and hopefully he has them good legs and in, in good order because he's going to the Mile House City next. When we go into our next game, Baltimore at Denver, the Broncos are <laughs> undefeated. The Broncos are also the favorite in this game. Minus one. So it's, it's, it's a tight <laughs> one. It's, it's a toss-up for them. In terms of Vegas, this is the toss-up of toss-ups. Broncos are the, are, are the favorite at a minus one. But... Baltimore and Denver are both a negative 108, which means even they can't decide who's really going to win. It's a toss-up. So you have the Ravens, who did fall, you know, uh, uh, to the Raiders, the, the the other undefeated team in that division, which we'll talk about <laughs> later, um, versus the current still um, undefeated Broncos team. But, you know, I don't, I don't go first when it comes to my team. So, Lou, what do you do? Yeah, this game, man. Woo. Um, this is gonna be a tough one. Um, I, I'm I'm really worried about 
you know, when you have teams, especially from the Northeast, going up to Colorado, um, the air up there, it, it's really thin and it does affect a lot of players. Um, I, I'm worried how it's going to affect Lamont running, running wise, um, if he has his lungs. But, um, you know, Denver's defense is mean. Um, I mean, this backs up why Aaron Rodgers was rumored to go there, why Russell Wilson wanted to, to go there, because Denver is a plug and play kind of team right now you plug anyone in and they're gonna succeed look at teddy bridgewater two gloves teddy you know um over there uh i don't think denver can hold up with a high scoring team like baltimore um baltimore has found the running game even though they're depleted at running back and they got guys they're picking up off the street um but i think four weeks in to, to understand the offense to understand the schemes you know, they still rushed over for 200 yards collectively as a team last week. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of running. Uh, Hollywood Brown, catch him. Catch catch him. <laughs> catch a ball, bro. I lost a fantasy game because of you. Dropped two touchdowns. Killed me. But I think Baltimore pulls it out. Um, I think they, they they put their stamp on the league, on the division as, as one of the elites. And, you know, they go in there and, and go in there and beat Denver. Ben? Yeah, this one's tough. Yeah, this one's tough. Um, but I'm actually gonna go with the Broncos on this one. I feel it's gonna be kind of a little bit of a letdown game after that big win. Um, traveling over to Denver. Denver has a really, really good defense, and they ha- they have a pass rush. Um, their their offensive players are pretty good. My my concern was always Bridgewater. I mean, he just manages the game. But if he can throw in a couple of places in there and keep up, keep pace with them. Um, I think they have a shot because I, I think they will be able to contain them a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Denver can also run the ball. They have two decent backs, the rookie, um, is Jay Williams, something like that, and Melvin Gordon still there. So they have some weapons. I, my only concern is Teddy Bridgewater. He's just not like a big playmaker, you know, down the field kind of guy. But they, I, I think they can stand there. I, I, I think they're gonna they're gonna catch a break. Like I said, I feel like Baltimore's coming off that big high, so I, I can see this one as a letdown game. So that's my only reason, really, leaning more towards the Broncos. So, you know, I'm gonna pick Baltimore. Um, that's my favorite team. But even if it was against a, a a team that I felt was really good competition, I would lean against them. But here's my reasoning for Baltimore. The Broncos beat the Giants, they beat the Jaguars, and they beat the Jets. Who have they played? That's my only thing to that. Who have they played? There's nobody in that team that even matches remotely close to Baltimore, um, offense or defensively. Uh, I, I think Baltimore, even though everybody knows going to Maha City is the hardest place to play. Um, that's like super saiyan level training you need to, to get your elevation and your windage up for that. Um, but while the Denver Broncos do have a really good defense, it could be they have a really good defense or they just play really bad teams and their defense looks phenomenal. I guess one thing we will find out will be on that on Sunday when that happens. Um I trust in Lamar, I trust in Mark Andrews, I trust that Hollywood Brown will have his hands ready. Um, hopefully he'll have his hands ready. Um, Boy, he needs some spite attack. He needs, look. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I mean, people used to say Jerry Rice has stickums. You know, he may need that. I don't know. But <laughs> look, I, I, I say he definitely needs to catch. And, you know, it's, 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 it's that's one of the reasons why we, we, we do miss, um, uh, Bateman, you know, on on because uh, we, we thought he was going to be our number one. Um, and this, so, but had, had he caught those two touchdowns, mm-hmm. Justin it would have been over. Justin yeah. Tucker would have never had that opportunity. So that's very really true. That's very really true. So you know, I think Hollywood also said, "Look, I'm going to give my man the field goal record." Kind of so, set him up. <laughs> and Tucker better buy him a four wheeler or a sea do or something to thank him. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely, he definitely need to give that man something for that. But yeah, I, I, I think Baltimore wins this one. I think as good as the Broncos defense has been playing, because don't get me wrong, last year, even against layup teams, they were losing. So they, they, they were zero four 
by the time they got their first win, that also came against the Jets. So yeah, like it, uh, it, the, the Broncos could have easily been a bad team this year and just showed it, but now nah, they actually came to play. I'll give them that much credit. Um, I, I just also see um, Baltimore's offense just just having a, a, a good time against them because um, you it's it's, or it's it's more than just stopping Lamar. It's trying to focus on even the others who have come and stepped up um, to to be our running backs, um, and they've all come and they've all contributed. Um, and that leads us into the AFC West showdown. And it does not contain the Chiefs. <laughs> it contains the, the, the third best team in that division, oddly enough, and the second best team in the second, well, the, one of the other undefeated teams, the Raiders. The Raiders are traveling into the Chargers. Uh, almost, I got to keep reminding myself, they are in Los Angeles, not <laughs> in San Diego. But <laughs> oddly enough, not the undefeated team here is the favorite. They're the underdog. The favorite team is the Chargers, also minus three, uh, negative 158. The Raiders are, pl um, are plus 134. Um, so it's funny how Vegas gives the odds to Denver, but not to the other undefeated team. But hey, it happens. <laughs> ben, what do you think is going to happen in this one, man? I think the Raiders come back down to earth. <laughs> I think they're going to lose this one. I, I think the Chargers have a really nice offense. Uh, their defense is adequate. Um, so I think they'll, they'll be able to put a little bit of pressure on, on Derek Carr. But, uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just don't see the Raiders continuing at this pace that they're on right now. Um, they're generating a pass rush, which they didn't have last year. So I, I don't know how long they can keep that up. So we're going to see. This is a big test for them. Like this is one, a good team matchup right now when they're on the top. Cause I believe they've had hat starts in the past couple of years as well. And then they just faltered. So um, that's, that's my reason. I, I think they just, they're going to come down to earth on this one. They're going to settle back a little bit. I, I just, I just can't go against Justin Herbert. That, that guy is just too good. He is really good quarterback. Sometimes his head coach is making some calls that cost them games, but that boy, he, he gives you a chance to win in every game. So I have, I have to stick with, with the charges on this one. Luke, what to do? Derek Carr is balling right now. <laughs> Man is straight balling. Um, I don't know what was in his Wheaties in the offseason, um, but he, he's, he's balling out right now. And him and Darren Waller, look, unstoppable right now. Um, whoever has them on the fantasy team, one and two, shout out to y'all because y'all tuning in right now. <laughs> with those two. Um, I'm rocking with the Raiders on this. I think the Chargers are still that blooming team that's trying to figure out what their identity, you know. Um, yeah, I, I just – I the, the biggest surprise I have for the Raiders is, one, they're undefeated, and we haven't heard shit from John Gruden. <laughs> like, that's – blowing my mind right now that he's been this quiet. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, again, this is another important matchup within that division. Uh, I'm rocking with the Raiders on this. I, and, and until someone punches them in the mouth, um, and I don't see the charges of that team to punch them in the mouth, um, I would say KC probably that, that team that can, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe and blow for blow with them. But my money is on Derek Carr because the man is playing out of his mind right now. Um, He's playing with a chip on his shoulder. He like he's running for that MVP trophy first. So, yeah, um, Carr is playing lights out right now. Um, hell, they they did beat my team, and hell, like that was a. I mean, if anybody had red zone or sunny ticket or even had access to that game last week, that was a phenomenal ending between the Raiders and the Dolphins. Um, like the fact that the Dolphins even came back and then the Raiders said, now nah, hold that. We, we, we got y'all back. Um, that was a phenomenal ending as well. Um, the Chargers, such tough breaks when they came to Dallas. Um, penalties killed them. The undisciplined. 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 It was undisciplined yeah. stuff. Um, and they and they were the one team that really slowed down Dallas's offense for the, for the most part. 
Um, the problem is that the question is, can they slow down Derek Carr and Waller um, and others? Because they, the Raiders had just been playing some really good ball lately. Um, I, damn it, I think I'm going to go with the Chargers for this one. I don't know why. I just got a funny feeling about the Chargers in this one. I, I really have no analysis to this one. I have no... <laughs> I have no 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 quarrels to this one. I just blindly so got? I'm just I, I gonna blindly you. pick charges on, on this on this. Look, I'll give you another reason. Like you mentioned, they played Miami tough, tough game, like to win and come, you know, mm-hmm. hold them off. I, that that that's gonna take a toll on them. They have what two overtime games already? Yeah, I, it, two overtime yeah, games. So I, it's gonna catch up to them. So I, that's why I also think. Yeah, extra I mean, day off though. Extra day off. So it's true they did, but extra <laughs> day off. You know, and you know, it's it's a Monday night game. It's prime time. Which when was the last time we seen the Raiders Monday night in, 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 four, in four weeks? Yeah. yeah, I think it was like Rich Gannon still now. <laughs> yeah, John Madden still might have been the coach, but right. <laughs> like I, I don't remember. It's it's amazing, but you know, um, I don't know. I I, I got a I got a feeling Justin Herbert's gonna um pulled through on this one. I think that loss against Dallas was really crushing to them. Um, the, the Chargers have been playing um, better ball since then. Um, I, I, and I, especially, I mean, for all those, for the three teams you mentioned, Broncos, Raiders, Chargers, they definitely need to, you know, keep pace because they do have that looming dragon. That is, mm-hmm. that, 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 that did lose. So they don't poke the bear. They don't poke the bear. No, especially the Chargers. They poked that bear against the Chiefs and they beat them. Um, best believe they're going to have fire for everybody else after that. Um, they picked up Josh Gordon, too. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, hopefully he doesn't go to Denver and get hot. But, they um, off the lead. <laughs> I don't know, man. He, he's been out the league for way, way too long. I just don't see him as being an impact player anymore. Look, even Sherman got he, – he, he went to the Bucks. So, you know, and I know we're not going to talk about, you know, the Brady Bowl, you know, Buccaneers, Pats, because I know Sherman went to the Buccaneers, and, you know, like that doesn't really make a difference to me or any of us. I do believe that we all feel the Buccaneers are going to win. But that's regardless of the point. Um, my homie picks special – to y'all is at the end of the game, Brady and Belichick handshake or hug. Does it last more than two seconds? <laughs> Lou, it's not even gonna be close to that, bro. It's not. It's not. It, it, it's gonna be a. <laughs> no, nah, there's no love loss there. Ben, what do you think? I go over it. I, I say he he gives him the two seconds. <laughs> so you give him, so you give him right. So you give him the push. You give him the push, you give him right over. No, I'm going to go over to Kopasi, maybe give him a solid three seconds, you know, chit-chatting while he has him in the embrace. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know what? I'm going to, because I said it, I'm not going to do a push. I'm gonna, that's, that's a cop-out. I'm going to say it's going to last 2.5 seconds. So that's over. <laughs> and that's the homie pick special of the week. Um, <laughs> the Brady Bowl hug or hug or handshake embrace. Um, but, yeah, we got some fun games this Sunday. Um, we may or may not have a fun game tonight when it comes to the Jags and Bengals. That boy Joe Burrow Bengals. is a problem right now. Yes. He's got Mar Chase. He's Mar Chase yeah. right now. He has a touchdown I mean, got, in every game. You know, we, touchdown we, in every game. So I, I'm also remiss to also say I'm very glad Pittsburgh got the ass uh, handed to them a little bit. Um, brought them back down to earth since they last year they were like undefeated. For the first I think they're done. I think they're done. Yeah, game. Pittsburgh looks really old right now. I, I nothing God about damn, them. I gotta love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you know, like I say, you no, know, it's been a good, it's been a good week four. We're looking forward for a good week four. We'll see y'all in week five. Comment, subscribe, like, share. Tell us we're wrong. Tell us we're right. Tell us that we're tell me that we're smart. Tell us that we're idiots. Especially me, because I was 0-5 last week. I won't be on five this week, I bet. But (laughs) until then, we'll see y'all later. Peace. Peace.